Home TV. This is Morning at NTV and many thanks for staying with us. Yesterday, the Archbishop, Dr. Stephen Kazimba Mugalu, was enthroned as the ninth Archbishop of the Church of Uganda. His predecessor, Reverend Stalin Tagali, entered a transition. Only one man alive has experienced that is Reverend Henry Luke Orombi, the seventh Archbishop of the Church of Uganda. Our reporter, Stephen Mbide, spoke to him about his transition into the background, uh, the politics of the day, and the direction of the church. Take it away, Mr. Mbide. Good morning and thank you for watching Morning at NTV. Stephen Mbide coming to you too from somewhere in Kampala. I'm having a conversation with the former Archbishop of the Church of Uganda, His Grace Henry Rukorombi. He was the Archbishop of Uganda and the Bishop of Kampala from 2004 to 2012. He is going to tell me how life is in retirement and some issues that are affecting Ugandans. Your Grace, you, you retired with the promise that you go ahead with the gospel. How is retirement taking you on? I left my office December 2012, having worked for nine years out of the 10 years of an archbishop. Now, nine years out of 10 is not a short time. My retirement came earlier by only one year, which is 12 months. And I went back to my home in Goli, which is in Nebi, in the highlands of Nebi, uh, very close to the border, uh, border station in Goli. And I've been there since then. And going out, I work, I come back. That's my base right now, where you can find me. How is life like? Because you retired with the promise of continuing the, the gospel. Oh, yes. Like, 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 oh, yeah. How is it now? Like, I have been busy. My program, I ran a, a two-yearly program. This is 2020. I'm already building 2021. My program is already running from January up to December. If you're looking for me now, you really have to look for me to get some slot for you. For 2020. I, I, I do a lot of uh, conventions with young people. In December, I was in Nebi, I was in Gulu uh, High School for the Diocese of Northern Uganda. In January, I was in Northwestern Ankole in Ibanda, and I came to Masindi. And uh, so this is now because of the holidays, they're now over. When we come to first time holidays, I'll be doing a retreat on the prayer mountain with young people. August, I have got other, other, other conferences and conventions. I basically do a lot with the young people. I also do a lot with leaders. Every three months, Bishop Luere, myself, Mama Maria of Vision for Africa, we take leaders of high caliber of this country to a place called Tongolo in Buikwe, overlooking the source of the Nile. We have a big place there, prayer mountain for leaders. And we take these leaders for a weekend. Friday they arrive, Saturday we spend the whole time with them. Sunday they leave. March, June, September, November, we're out there. And it's an amazing time for our leaders to retreat because you know leaders are always very busy. They can't take a rest. They have questions, ask them many times. Nobody has a time to rest. So we take them to retreat, to, to connect with each other, and also to seek God and to sharpen their vision. So we do that. We've been doing that since I retired, 2013 up to to date. And it's an amazing blessing for many people. I finished what I thought I was supposed to do. And my fulfillment right now is that I'm doing what I am supposed to do. I'm still in touch with several dioceses. I'm still in church with Christians. I'm still in church with many people. I'm no longer a, a mass media person because I don't carry anybody to cover my work, because that is for people who are in the front line. I am now doing what I call support ministry to leadership, encourage them, walk alongside them. I feel I finished what I was supposed to do. But you know, in leadership, when you are good, people don't want you to leave. But I did nine out of 10. Now, any student who scores nine, 90% is a poor student. If you miss anything from the power pit, that you are no longer the Archbishop of the Church of Uganda? When I took the office, I had assignments. The assignments were given me, and in my opinion, it was done. <clears throat> One, I was given assignment to bring hope to the young people of our church. Many were looking for where to belong. They wanted to go wherever place they could go to, to literally be fed of the word. 
I use my pulpit in all sense cathedral. I visited dioceses. I encourage young people. I, I preach to them. A large number came back. I had the responsibility to build a church house. And so it was in my time we solicited funds through Equity Bank to start the foundation and we finish up a shell and my follower, my successor, completed it. I had a mandate also to build a bigger cathedral for All Saints Cathedral. So I started that first phase and my successor took it up to a point where possibly it can be used by maybe the end of this year or next year. I also wanted to bring back the church in its dignity so that financially we are independent and lead the church into a prosperity that the church can feel we can run our own programs. And that was done when I was finished. And I finished all the squabble that was in several dioceses, a, a, a bishop struggling with the leadership succession. That was done. So when it was done, I was done. And I decided I would leave and continue with now the ministry that I'm doing right now. On Sunday, we saw the, uh, the former Archbishop of Uganda, now His Grace Stanley in Tagali, and the new Archbishop now was enthroned on Sunday, His Grace Stephen Samuel Kazimba. How would you remember His Grace Stanley in Tagali? His Grace Stanley in Tagali has been in office. Oh, he took over from where I left. He is a pastor. He traveled quite a lot throughout the country. He traveled beyond the country. He did that kind of ministry. Don't forget, we come into that office majorly using the gifts God has given us. And one thing he did, which we shall commend him for a long time, is that he continued the legacy of our church to stand on biblical conservative principle in the Anglican communion, where other churches are going another way outside the biblical teaching on marriage. We started that, that, that commitment when I came on board. In 2005, we had started with global meetings already. Now, he took that wholesale and continued with that. He has spoken for the need of children. We did child sacrifice campaign, which was getting rampant in this country. This year, he declared this should be the year of family. Last year was the year of family. And, and, and I think that kind of thing builds the community, builds the country. And now his time is over. He has finished successfully. Now, work and leadership always will be rated how you finish. How you come in may not be a big issue, but how you finish is a very big issue. The fact that you can hand over to the next coming archbishop and properly like it is Sunday. Now, that to us is a big success. Now, some people struggle when there's leadership succession. Dowsis is struggle. Now, the provincial level, we haven't seen that happen. So that is a good thing. Now, the new guy who is coming in is a guy whom I knew ever since he was a provost in Mukono. A very good preacher, very intelligent guy, a global man, a one who is good relating with people, a one who his track record is very, very good. He was in Mitiana. You go right now to Mitiana and see what he has done. Now, if you rate somebody according to his track record, you can get the guy. I am so confident when he comes to take over the reign of leadership. The gift that he has, the ability that he has, the contacts that he has should bring our church to a level of real recognition because I think he's a very clear-headed leader. Uh, Stephen Gazimba is going to be, as I see, a very good leader. What's your message to the new Archbishop of the Church of Uganda, His Grace, His Grace Stephen Kazimba? I am so confident when he comes to take over the reign of leadership. The gift that he has, the ability that he has, the contacts that he has, should bring our church to a level of real recognition because I think he's a very clear-headed leader. Uh, Stephen Gazimba is going to be, as I see, a very good leader. Talking about the young people, some people are saying that it's now time for the old guard to leave office and the man to be passed on to the young people. What's your opinion about this? Maybe the retirement bit of it is not what we need. Think about a real race. A real race 
the person who has run has to pass the stick properly. The person who is receiving the stick has to receive it properly. So whichever transition is taking place has to be properly done because younger people need the older brain behind them in order to help them draw history into the future. So I want to see a bridge coming through. Young people should come definitely and they need to be mentored. Now part of the difficulty we are having in our society is younger people without mentors. Now you can't succeed very much if you don't have a mentor. You need somebody to help you calculate your move who has been in the race. That's why in a real race, when somebody starts very well, the other two continue very well. The fourth person is going to succeed. And when you all succeed, the race is already a success. So young people to say, we don't need the old people because we are not young people want to do it. Young people swear, you are disconnecting from history. And if you don't know your history, your future is in jeopardy. So let the old people give room for the young people, but they should mentor them. And I, I think right now older people should be mentoring younger people so that the younger people, when they take on, you are cheering them to continue. And there is a continuity between the old and the young. Now, that's what I'm doing. I want to mentor young people, and I'm standing there with them, but I also give them a chance to participate. Thank you so much for sharing your time with us here on Morning at NTV. Thank you for watching Morning at NTV. I've been having a conversation with the retired Archbishop of the Church of Uganda, His Grace. Henry Rukorombi, and now have to take you back to studio for the rest of the quality program here on Morning at NTV. Stick it here. You're watching Morning at NTV. You're still watching Morning at NTV. Right there, we are going to take a very short breather and return with our next conversation. We are going to be talking about agricultural insurance. What did you know about that? Did you know that if you are a farmer and you venture into agriculture without any form of insurance, you're actually putting yourself in a big dilemma just in case a flood washes away your crops or just in case a drought scorches all your plants? You'll be left with no actually no reprieve but if you're insured you'll be getting some kind of help from your insurer in that case we're coming back with that conversation right here on morning at ntv